Right. Uh, all we have left to do is the output driver um, and its associated uh, open collector part there. But uh, yeah, let's talk about this. So in a normal um, in a normal situation, um, let's see here. Let me get this paper here. To draw on. Okay. So in a normal situation, um, you might. So you want to push pull output. You want something beefy, right? So you might do something like this. You might have a uh, system where you have two transistors. Okay. And this is plus V and this is ground and this is out. Okay. So very, very common. Um, this would have to be a, um, uh, NPN and this would have to be a PNP and there you go. So very, very common circuit and away you go. But remember back in the day, uh, you're not designing a PC board. So you don't have luxuries of picking two parts. You're building an IC. So you have to adapt to whatever the IC process can give you. And when the 555 was, was made, high power PNPs were just not a thing. Um, so you had to design the circuit. If you're going to have high power things, you need to design it with NPNs. Okay. And so how many, how many do we need? Well, we need a push and a pull, and we also need a, uh, an extra one here for the, for the discharge. So we need three, we need three heavy duty transistors. All the rest can be kind of wimp wimpy, but you need three heavy duty ones. And you can see here on the picture of the die, there were three transistors that were all the same. And those are the three that we have to deal with. Okay. So what are we going to do? Okay. We have, uh, we have to design some type of circuit that will do this. Okay. Where this is the output and we have a PN, an NPN here and we have an NPN here. We're going to have to figure out how do we make this work? Well, um, lucky for us at the same vintage that this designer was in, uh, he would have been very, very familiar with TTL parts. And here's a TTL part. Okay. And take a look at the output section. Uh, it is an NPN NPN. Okay. And so they made this one work. It was push pull and it was NPN. I mean, uh, NPN NPN. They had to put this transistor in there. Okay. And this transistor is called a phase splitter. All right. So let's talk about phase splitters. Resistor, resistor, plus V minus V or ground. Okay. We'll call it ground. Uh, okay. So um, what does this circuit do? Well, if we look here and we look here, uh, we find that these two things are 100, 180 degrees out of phase. All right. When this guy goes up, this guy goes down. When this guy goes down, that guy goes up. And so if you had some waveform here, okay. Uh, and it was doing some wiggle. Okay. Then over here, it will have an in phase wiggle, but over here it will be upside down. Okay. And so these two waveforms will be mirror images of one another by, by this face splitter. Okay. And so, uh, that's what they used here. They used a, a face splitter and then they ran the, the up things over here and the down things over here. And that works. Now you say, Whoa, wait a minute. What's that diode? Um, well, so in this direction, Okay. When you have a voltage here, um, you have this diode drop and this diode drop. So you have two diode drops to the output. Okay. And in the plus direction, you only had one diode drop. And so they put in an extra diode here. So you have two diode drops. So it kind of balances things out. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at our circuit. Okay. Um, 
so uh, if we go cover everything up here, we have a, an NPN and an NPN and an output. Okay. And then we back up and we have a bunch of garbage. Okay. Very, very confusing. So let's, let's redraw this. Okay. In our device, uh, this is Q22. This is Q24. And this is Q20. Okay. And so we have a phase splitter and then we have the, uh, the output section. Okay. And so everything looks fine. We're missing a resistor here, but we have a resistor here. So the current's going to go this way. So there's tricks you play and circuits and stuff. And it didn't really matter that he didn't have a resistor here. Okay. So he left it off. Um, so, uh, I talked about, um, we have two diode drops going this direction, but we only have one diode drop going this direction. We need to have, we can put in that, um, we can put in that, uh, diode here. Okay. Just like the TTL parts did. Okay. But what they did, uh, I'm going to draw a little box around this. Okay. All right. So, um, I'm going to draw what that actually is. Okay. Um, this place here where I have Q22, it's not really correct. It's actually this. They put in a Darlington at this location. So you have two diode drops. It takes care of that problem. And that's a whole bunch of game, but I guess that wasn't an issue. Um, so, uh, here's a Darlington. Okay. Sometimes you put this extra resistor in here to make sure that this guy will turn off. It turns on easily, but sometimes this guy doesn't like to turn off. So you put a resistor here. So all of this replaces this box here. So this is actually Q21 and this is actually Q22. Okay. So this is actually Q21 and Q Q22. Okay but it's, I draw it for the simplicity. Okay. But it's actually this, it's actually this thing there. Okay. And, uh, we are almost done. Uh, this is 220 ohms. Okay. And we are going to make a parallel circuit down here. And this is a hundred ohms. So these two transistors here, are doing the exact same thing. This one's being driven with a 220. This is being driven with a, a 100. So you get some current splitting here. Okay. Two thirds of the current will go this way. One third of the current will go that way. Um, and this is the, um, uh, the discharge. Okay. This is the open click route. You, you see that the, the two outputs are exactly the same. This one's push pull. And this one is, 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 I mean, uh, source sync and this one is sync only, right? And so, yeah, that's how, that's how that, so, uh, that's why I say it's just like another output on the open collector because it comes exactly off the same signal that drives this. Okay. No magic. It's just whatever pulls down on this pulls down on this as well. So that's the, uh, that's the discharge. Just charge. Okay. That's pin seven. Out's pin three. Okay. So that is all we have in there, except there's one extra funny business going on. Okay. And, um, so, um, in order for this to pull down faster, okay, there may be some circumstances where they want this to pull down a little faster. You've got this, Darlington up here, and this guy's just a single transistor. So I guess he needed a little helping out. And the guy did kind of a crude trick. I wouldn't have ever put it in my circuit, uh, but let me draw it in. And it is this. He put a diode here. You're going, what the heck is that thing? <laughs> What's that supposed to do? Okay. So this is how it works. All right. Let's say that you have a high signal over here. Okay. And you've told it to pull it down. Okay. And so, 
uh, this transistor um, is starting to turn on, okay? Because it turns on and it drives this guy and it pulls down. So this guy is on, okay? And he has to sync all of his current through a 6.8K resistor, okay? And so he's not going to pull down very fast because there's also a uh, 4.7, but that this one doesn't really count because it's got a, a, a low impedance path here. It's got 100 ohms here, right? So this, this guy is just for biasing. He's not really in the circuit when things are, he's not really crucial in the circuit when things are pulling down, all right? So you want to help this guy out a little bit. You would like to have a little more current going through this guy, okay? A little more current co coming through here. Well, if the voltage on the output is higher than the voltage here, okay, this guy's gonna start to pull down. Once so he starts to pull down, this will go low, but you want him to boost. So a little bit of current will be able to go through this diode. This diode will become positively biased. It will come over to here it will go through here and then go through this way. So it makes this round trip and turns this guy on harder. That's what that stupid diode does. Uh, you know, remember the, um, the waveforms that I showed on the oscilloscope uh, had a funny little thing here? Um, I think that might be due to this stupid diode. <laughs> anyway, um, that's what's in there. And is it just a normal diode? No, it's one of these funny uh, base collector tied together. So it's an emitter, emitter base junction a diode, okay? So this is actually Q23, okay? So those are, that's the entire output now, okay? So we explain, explain the, whole, the whole thing. Let's uh, cover up this stuff here, okay? So here's our output, here's our... Here's our uh, source sync. Uh, here's the Darlington with the 3.9 to make sure it turns off. Here's that funny little diode. Here's the uh, phase inverter, okay? And then our 100 ohms is actually down here into our discharge, okay? So the only thing that we haven't covered yet is this funny reset signal coming in. Remember, this is not reset. Um, and so this Q25, um, if, if this goes low, then this guy turns on, okay? If this guy turns on, it'll also turn on this guy. So it, it makes sure that Q14 is on during a reset. So that's what Q25 does. And then remember that goes over to the uh, set reset flip-flop and does the reset function. We've already seen that, but this is where it comes from. It comes from this funny, um, comes from this funny uh, thing here, so. All right, hope that wasn't too confusing today. Uh, if you haven't ever seen this before, it's interesting. This is a NAND gate uh, or, an, or a NOR gate. Let's see, it would be a not true. So it would be A, not B, or A and, yeah, A or not B equals y, something like that. So it would be a dot b equals not y. Uh, so it would be a NAND gate, okay? So if you didn't follow that, I've got some other videos about weird stuff like this, but anyway. Okay, so we are done. We have explained the entire uh, circuit now. And uh, I don't think it's worthy looking at any waveforms. It's just going to be uh, copies. It's just a, a higher output than what we saw on the flip-flop. Just going to be high-low and uh, open collector low. There you go. 555 circuit in details. I, I recommend you buy one of these boards if you want to learn about 555s or just want to learn about analog circuitry. And uh, it's been fun.